So here we have 96 divided by 8. Now this would be a lot easier if it was something like 80 divided by 8 because we think well 8 times what equals 80 and that would be 10. But that's the idea we're going to use. What if this was just 80 divided by 80 divided by 8? So here I have 96 base 10 blocks but I'm going to split this up right here at the 80 mark. Right and so if I take 80 divided by 8 equals 10 and we're still left with 16 well 16 divided by 8 when we think 8 times what equals 16 that would be 8 times 2 this would be one group of 8 and then this left over here would be our second group of 8 so 80 divided by 8 is 10 16 divided by 8 is 2 well how does that help us figure out what 96 divided by 8 would be well, 96 is just this whole thing, and that is the 80 plus the 16 is 96. And so if we took this whole thing and divided it by 8, that would give us a total of 12. Let's look at how we would write this out in a better way. So we started off with 96 divided by 8, and we realized that 96 is really just 80 plus 16. 80 plus 16 is 96. And we took that and we divided it by 8. We're basically distributing that division how we did in the picture. 80 divided by 8 is 10. 16 divided by 8 is 2. And so we get our total of 12. Alright, let's look at another one. So this one is 91 divided by 7. One thing I can do is I can say, well, 91 is 70 plus 21. If I were to break this up into 90 plus 1, well, that will not easily divide by 7 because neither of these numbers are multiples of 7, so it will not divide evenly. So when we're breaking these up, we have to think of ways to break it up to where we can divide these numbers easily, well, where it'll divide evenly. So we're looking for multiples of 7. So 90 plus 1, even though that is a way of writing 91, it's not a good way to do this division. So we can turn it into 70 plus 21, dividing it by 7. So here's our 70 here, and that would be for this other side. So 70 divided by 7 is 10, plus 21 divided by 7 is 3, and so we get a total of 13. So 91, remember our original problem, 91 divided by 7 would be 13. All right, 54 divided by 3. So we have 54 here. And this one, we'll actually talk about a couple of different ways to break it up. I can turn 54. I can say 54 is 30 plus 24. We can say it's 33 plus 21. That would work as well because 33 plus 21 is also 54. I can also turn that into 27 plus 27. I know that's a little, that one's a little harder to see that 54 is 27 plus 27, but this is three different ways we can break it up. Now notice in each case, all of these are multiples of three because I'm dividing them into groups of three. And then it's doesn't help if we try and turn it into something like 50 plus 4 or 40 plus 14 because none of those are multiples of 3 and so they will not divide evenly. So remember when you're separating these we want to separate them into multiples of what we're dividing by which in this case is 3. This would be 30 divided by 3 which is 10 plus 24 divided by 3 which is 8 and that gives us 18. In this one, we turned it into 33 
plus 21, we take that and divide it by 3. 33 divided by 3 is 11, plus 21 divided by 3 is 7, and we still get 18. All right, and in this last case, we turn 54 into 27 divided by 20, 27 plus 27, and we're going to take that and divide it by 3, and we get 9, because 27 divided by 3 is 9, and the other 27 divided by 3, remember, we have to divide all the pieces, is another 9, and 9 plus 9 is still 18. Okay, so I wanted to do that to show you that there are a couple of different ways that we can divide these and none of them are right or wrong, it's just about what you find easiest. So let's do the next one and this one we're going to do without the base 10 blocks, we're going to use what's called an area model. Area is length times width. We know we have a length of 2. We don't know the width, but we know the area of this rectangle needs to be 96. So the area, the total, the total number of rectangles, just like up here, see how 70 and 21 still made this 91. So it's kind of the same idea. We're just not actually drawing out 96 squares because that would take a long time. Two times something equals 96. And so we're thinking, okay, well, let's see. Let's think of big numbers. Well, I can say that I know that 2 times 40 will give me 80. And so that's basically saying I took this 96 and I broke it up into 80 plus something. If I already found the length of this rectangle, which gives me 80, that means I have 16 left. To divide up because 80 plus 16 equals 96. So I basically broke this up into 80 plus 16 divided by 2. So 2 times what equals 16? Well that's going to be 8. So we see that when we divide this we did 80 divided by 2 which gives us 40 plus 16 divided by 2 which is 8. That gives us 48. So 96, this total area of 96 divided by 2 is going to be 48 because 48 times 2, I'm going to use 8 times 2 is 16. I'm going to use partial product for this one. So 8 times 2 is 16 and 40, remember this is 40, times 2 is 80. 96 okay and that's just a way to check and make sure we've done our work correctly let's look at the next one so we have 84 plus 6 how should we divide this up well let's see I know that 6 times 5 is 30 so I could break this up into 30 plus something 30 plus what equals 84 well that'd be 30 plus 54 30 plus 54 equals that 84. I could have also turned this into 60 plus 24. Okay, and if you want to practice using the 60 plus 24, then you can try that way and see if you get the same answer I came up with. Okay, so 30 divided by 6 is 5 plus 54 divided by 6 is 9. And 5 plus 9 will be 14. So 84 divided by 6 is 14. Let's look at the last one. We have 72 divided by 3. I'm going to split this up again using the area model. A lot of classrooms, they want you to use the area model to show kind of a visual representation of your work. All right, so remember, we want it to turn this into, we want an area of 72. Well, let's see. Let's say 3 times 10 will give us 30. 3 times another 10 will give us another 30. And so total that gives us 60 
But remember, we want 72. So we have 60 accounted for, and we're trying to get 72, which means, well, 72 minus the 60 we've already used is 12. So 3 times what equals 12, and that's going to be 4. Now notice in this case, I split it up into, into 3, just to show you that, you know, there are more than one ways to split this up. I split this up into 30 plus 30 plus 12, and so we get a total of 10 plus 10 plus 4. So we get a total of 24. So 72 divided by 3 is 24. Now let's get into a problem that's a little more challenging. 292 divided by 2. How do you think we should split this up? Well, I know I can do 200 divided by 2. We still have another 92 that we need to break up. Let's say that we break this up into 80. 280. And 292 minus the 280 that we've already used leaves us 12 to all be divided by 2. All right, 200 divided by 2, well, half of 200, because we're splitting it between two people, would be 100. 80, if we want to cut that in half, that's going to be 40, because 40 times 2 is 80. And then 12, if we want to divide that by 2, is going to be 6. So we get a total of 100 plus 40 plus 6, which is 140. Let's look at another one. 132 divided by 3. The first thing that comes to mind, remember, we want 3 times something. And we want to get close to 132. Let's say that I try and pull out 90. We want 3 times something to equal 132. And so we've already pulled out 90. 132 minus 90 leaves us with 42 left. And 42 may not be the easiest number, but from 42 I can pull out another 30. So that's a total of 120. And we're trying to get to 132, so that's going to be plus another 12. And all of that's going to be divided by 3. 90 divided by 3 is going to be 30. And then this will give us, an, this will be another 10, because 10 times 3 equals 30. And then for this one, 3 times what equals 12? That's going to be 4. 3 times 4 equals 12. So we get a total of 30 plus 10 plus 4 when we divide each one of these by 3 which 30 plus 10 is 40, plus 4 gives us 44. So 132 divided by 3 is 44. What we want to do when we're splitting these up is try to get as close to this number as we possibly can. So a better way to do that is to think that 3 times 30 is 90, but a better way we could have done it is to say, well, then 3 times 40 is 120 and we could have split that up with 120 we're gonna do that with this last problem so 765 and if we think about it we can say all right so 9 times 5 is 45 so 9 times 50 is 450 that doesn't get us very close so let's move up let's say 9 times 7 well, 9 times 7 is 63, so 9 times 70 is 630. 9 times 80 is 720. That's pretty close. 9 times 90 is 810, and that's too much. So 9 times 80 would give us 720. So I want to break this up into 720 because I know 720 is a factor is a multiple of 9 so if I break up this 765 into these little pieces into 720 plus what gives us 765 well then that means we have another 45 left and now I'm taking these pieces and dividing those by 9 so 720 divided by 9 is 80 like we said before plus 
45 divided by 9 is 5. So 765 divided by 9 is going to be the sum of those, which is 85. 